What was it? What did people see? We did receive a lot of reports via our reported feature on our website. A lot of viewers wondering. 11 now, it's a nervous night for residents of Fairlawn, New Jersey, wondering if it will happen again. This isn't the plot of a science fiction movie. This is 2024. The year has just begun, not long ago, but people around the world have already witnessed enough shocking scenes. In Burbank, California, a man named Haas Morales spotted something unusual in the sky. He filmed it and wondered out loud if it was Jesus Christ descending. In the video, he can be heard speaking Spanish to his family, saying it looks like a man coming down from the clouds. Separately, that same night, there were strong light beams lighting up the sky in Jerusalem. Someone took a picture of the lights, but later noticed a strange figure in the clouds. The person taking the picture is confused about what they saw in both the sky and the photo, calling it a phenomenon and a missing puzzle piece. Not stopping there, shortly after, a mysterious sound began to appear in the emerald sky of Jerusalem. It is not the sound of bells from ancient temples or churches, but the mysterious, majestic, and scary sound of a trumpet. The people passing by felt trembling when they heard that trumpet sound, like a prophecy of destruction. Is that the judgment trumpet? The apocalypse? Clue that the end time has come? No one knows. While these mysterious occurrences are scary and confusing, it's important to be both curious and critical when trying to understand them. Why haven't they been studied more? Is it because science can't explain them yet? Or are there other reasons? Like fear of public panic. The connection to the Bible is interesting. Some people say the sounds resemble trumpets, which appear in the book of Revelation as a sign of the apocalypse. Additionally, the story of the walls of Jericho falling after trumpets were blown, Joshua 6, suggests a long history of seeing loud sounds from the sky as significant religious events. These examples show that the idea of the heavens making important sounds is deeply rooted in our cultures and beliefs. Meanwhile, on the other side, some people believe that the image of things floating in the air is a sign of Jesus coming to earth for upcoming events. What does this mean? Are these just quirks of nature? Or could there be a deeper, more divine message encoded in these celestial phenomena? Lighten up now. Today, we're diving into a journey that bridges the gap between the heavens and the earth. We're not just talking about any signs. We're exploring the signs that have been whispered about for millennia, those foretold in the Bible, against the backdrop of our modern-day world events. As mentioned earlier, the trumpets of judgment appear not only one, but seven times. Number seven tends to represent something being finished or complete. Hence, God's creation was complete on the seventh day. It also tends to represent divine perfection. Let's take a moment to reflect on the significance of the number seven in the Bible. Of the numbers we see in the Bible, seven appears to show up far more frequently than most others. God creates the world in seven days, if we include the resting day, Genesis 1. In fact, we see seven appear more than 700 times throughout the Bible. Jacob works seven years for Laban before he marries his daughter, Genesis 29. We also can't seem to escape seven in Revelation in terms of seals, trumpets, and more. Often we see the number seven in reference to holy works of God. God creates the earth in seven days, Genesis 1. He commands the Israelites to make the seventh day of the week, Sabbath, a holy day filled with no working activities, Exodus 28 to 11. So when someone upholds the Sabbath, they uphold or fulfill a divine command. In Revelation, we have quite a few series of punishments, pouring out the wrath of God upon the earth. Throughout Revelation, we see a pattern of sevens in terms of God's judgment, the seventh seal introduces the seven trumpet judgments that wreak destruction with hail and fire. These seals, as depicted in the sacred text, foreshadow a succession of apocalyptic cataclysms serving as harbingers of Christ's imminent return and the dawn of the eschaton. Unfolding across the pages of Revelation from chapters 5 to 8, the prophecy of the seven seals emerges from the visionary experiences of John the Apostle during his exile on the desolate Isle of Patmos. Within this celestial vision, it becomes apparent that none among mortals or celestial beings can claim the authority or righteousness requisite to break the seals and unveil the scroll's mysteries, not even the most devout servants of the Almighty. The weight of this realization burdens John's soul, 
evoking a profound sorrow as he grapples with the uncertainty of whether anyone exists with the capacity to decode the prophetic revelations contained within the sealed scroll. Yet, in the midst of John's despair, a revelation unfolds. An elder, a wise harbinger of hope, appears to assuage John's distress, revealing the presence of one worthy to break the seals and unfurl the scroll. The line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. This enigmatic figure, celebrated for his lineage and divine authority, embodies the power to unravel the scroll's enigmatic contents. While for many, this figure unequivocally represents Jesus Christ, the incarnate Son of God, theological interpretations vary among different branches of Christianity, with some identifying the scroll's bearer as God himself. Against the backdrop of human history, amidst the turbulence of the COVID-19 pandemic that gripped the world in the early months of 2020, the echoes of Revelation's prophecies reverberated anew. Some biblical scholars, attuned to the signs of the times, speculated that the unfolding events mirrored the imagery of the initial four seals, though empirical evidence remains elusive. Compelling arguments have been made suggesting a parallel between current global crises and the prophetic warnings of Revelation. As you engage with today's discourse, I invite you to reflect upon these profound mysteries, to contemplate the timeless truths encapsulated within the sacred scriptures, and to discern for yourself. The next prophetic sequence in the book of Revelation is the Seven Trumpets, a series of significant events described from Revelation 8-2 to chapter 11. These events are narrated from the vision that John witnessed in a manner similar to when he saw the seals. The book of Revelation describes a series of dramatic events leading up to the end times. These events are revealed in two parts, the Seven Seals and the Seven Trumpets. The Seven Seals, when opened one by one, unleash a series of disasters on Earth, like wars, famines, and natural disasters. These can be seen as the initial warnings of God's judgment. The seven trumpets come next, building upon the troubles caused by the seals. Each trumpet blast brings a new catastrophe, like a burning meteor or a plague of monstrous locusts. The trumpets represent an escalation of God's judgment, growing more intense and widespread with each blast. The text emphasizes that these two sets of events are connected. The seals set the stage for the trumpets, with each disaster worsening the situation and leading to the ultimate display of God's power at the sounding of the seventh trumpet. Furthermore, the seven trumpets can be seen as a response to the prayers of the saints depicted in Revelation 8, 3 to 5, indicating a divine response to the suffering and persecution endured by God's people. The seven seals lay the groundwork for the unfolding of end-time events, while the seven trumpets amplify and expand upon these events, ultimately leading to the culmination of God's redemptive plan for humanity. When the time does come for Jesus to establish his kingdom, this world will pass away for a new one. Before that, there are many things that must come to pass, as recorded in the prophetic books of the Bible, particularly Revelation. One of the most intriguing and mysterious prophecies that will occur during the end of days is the coming of the Four Horsemen. Shrouded in the mystique of prophecy and symbolism, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse stride forth from the pages of Revelation, wielding metaphysical authority over the realms of disease, war, famine, and death. As the narrative unfolds in Chapter 6 of this apocalyptic tone, each horseman emerges as a spectral harbinger of imminent catastrophe their presence casting a shadow over a quarter of the Earth's expanse. In the ethereal musings penned by biblical scholar Fred Dew for The Trumpet in 2005, he articulated a somber warning echoed through the corridors of time. The resounding cadence of the horseman's thunderous hooves grows ever louder, heralding the inexorable approach of calamity. He postulated that the final horseman awaited only the ignition of a virulent plague capable of ensnaring a quarter of humanity in its grip. The eruption of the COVID-19 pandemic and the early throes of 2020 reignited fervent discourse surrounding Fred Dew's prophetic musings. Many beheld the pandemic as the fulfillment of the fourth seal, a sobering realization that catapulted discussions of eschatological significance into the forefront of public consciousness. By the waning months of 2021, grim statistics from the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy bore testament to the staggering toll exacted by the virus. 
with approximately 43% of the global populace, a staggering 3.8 billion souls succumbing to its insidious spread. Yet even as the pandemic's toll reached such staggering heights, the digital ether hummed with speculation. Denizens of cyberspace conjectured feverishly on the pandemic's penis symbolism in the grand tapestry of prophecy. If indeed the COVID-19 pandemic serves as the fulcrum upon which the fourth seal turns, it portends that three more seals must be rent asunder. As the parchment of history unfurls in the triumphant return of Christ, but before we delve into the enigma of these subsequent seals, let us first unravel the mysteries enshrouding the four horsemen, those spectral riders who gallop on the precipice of eternity, their steeds bearing the weight of humanity's fate. The term apocalypse, with its roots tracing back to the Greek language, carries profound significance, denoting not just an end-of-the-world scenario, but a grand unveiling of divine revelations. In the mystical tapestry of the Book of Revelation, the Apostle Yon stands as the conduit through which these celestial visions are conveyed, offering a glimpse into the eschatological drama that unfolds in the twilight hours preceding the second advent of Christ. Enshrouded in mystery and awe, the prophetic narrative discloses a triadic cascade of judgments, culminating in cataclysmic upheaval that reverberates across the cosmos. Within the hallowed pages of Revelation, spanning chapters 6 to 18, are unveiled the seals, trumpets, and bold judgments, each heralding divine retribution upon a world teetering on the brink of spiritual collapse. Echoing the solemn warnings of Jesus himself, recorded in the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Luke, and Mark, the impending era is dubbed the Great Tribulation, a crucible of suffering and upheaval unparalleled in human history. Against this apocalyptic backdrop, the sealed judgments emerge as the initial volleys in God's symphony of divine justice unveiling the inexorable march of providence. At the heart of these judgments lies a scroll held fast by seven seals, symbolizing the deed to the earth and the inheritance rightfully belonging to Christ, the Lamb who was slain. With reverent solemnity, John beholds the Lamb, the sole worthy recipient of divine honor and authority, as he breaks each seal, unleashing upon the earth corresponding judgments that echo across the ages. Emerging from the celestial tableau are four horsemen, ethereal embodiments of conquest, war, famine, and death. Each rides forth at the behest of celestial beings, their visages veiled in the numinous glow of divine mandate. The first horse, a resplendent steed of alabaster hue, bears a rider adorned with a regal crown and brandishing a bow, emblematic of sovereignty and dominion. Yet beneath this veneer of majesty lies a portentous truth. The rider, often interpreted as the Antichrist, emerges as a harbinger of false peace and deceptive promises, ensnaring humanity in a web of treachery and deceit. In the fulcrum of this revelation lies the ominous prophecy of Daniel, foretelling the Antichrist's mastery of manipulation, using the guise of peace to sow seeds of destruction. Thus, the sealed judgments serve as the prologue to the grand drama of eschatological upheaval, a prelude to the cosmic conflict between the forces of light and darkness wherein divine sovereignty contends with human folly and the destiny of creation hangs in the balance. In Daniel 8.25, we are forewarned of the fragile nature of the peace that ensues. The tranquility that may momentarily cloak the world will soon be shattered. A truth echoed by the Apostle Paul in his epistle to the Thessalonians. He vividly illustrates how sudden destruction will descend upon humanity catching them unawares akin to the unexpected onset of labor pain upon a pregnant woman. As the second seal is broken in Revelation 6, 3, 4, the earth is plunged into the chaos of war, symbolized by the emergence of a bright red horse. This rider, granted authority to strip away peace from the earth, unleashes a torrent of violence and bloodshed upon humanity. It is widely believed that this rider represents the culmination of the false peace brokered by the Antichrist as well as other conflicts that erupt globally. The scripture Great Sword, attached to the sword wielded by the rider, emphasizes the magnitude of the devastation that will ensue. While the nature of the sword itself, resembling a short dagger, conveys the intimate and brutal nature of the violence that will unfold. Jesus himself, in his prophetic Olivet Discourse, foretells of these tumultuous times, cautioning against alarm in the face of wars and rumors thereof. 
He predicts a time when nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, accompanied by famines and earthquakes, as recounted in Matthew 24, 6, 7. The arrival of the third horseman, depicted as riding a black horse, symbolizes the scourge of famine that will ravage the earth. With the opening of the third seal, scarcity becomes rampant, as illustrated by the scales held by the rider, signifying the careful rationing of food. The voice amidst the celestial beings echoes the exorbitant prices for basic sustenance. A denarius for a mere quart of wheat or three quarts of barley, while sparing the luxury commodities of oil and wine from harm. Revelation 6, 5-6. The profound impact of scarcity and famine is vividly depicted. A denarius, equivalent to a day's wage in the first century, scarcely affords enough to sustain an individual with a quart of wheat, barely meeting the needs of a single meal. Barley, typically considered food for animals, becomes a meager sustenance for the destitute, while oil and wine, essential culinary staples, become precious commodities. The scales wielded by the rider of the black horse symbolize a harsh economic system, providing just enough sustenance to endure a day's toil. This rationing system drives food prices to exorbitant levels, amplifying the suffering brought by famine conditions. A testament to the devastating impact of the third horseman of the apocalypse. The arrival of the fourth horse and rider marks the culmination of the preceding judgments. As the fourth seal is broken, a pale horse emerges. Its rider, identified as death accompanied by Hades, wields authority over a quarter of the earth. The pale hue of the horse, akin to the color of chlorophyll, symbolizes the lifeless power of death, the inevitable consequence of warfare, famine, and pestilence. A staggering one quarter of the Earth's population succumbs to the relentless onslaught of the four horsemen, underscoring the magnitude of the tribulation foretold by Jesus in Matthew 24, 21. Yet amidst the unfolding chaos and devastation, there remains a glimmer of hope. The wrath of God, as depicted in Revelation, offers a path to redemption through faith in Jesus Christ. His sacrificial death and triumphant resurrection pave the way for deliverance from certain judgment. However, for those who spurn this salvation, there exists no refuge from divine retribution. A sobering reality emphasized by the writer of Hebrews, neglecting the opportunity for salvation leaves one vulnerable to the inexorable march of judgment, underscoring the urgency of embracing the offer of eternal life extended by the Lord himself unity in faith. Let us pause, dear brethren, and listen intently to the stirring call of the Holy Spirit, beckoning to those adrift amidst life's tempests. Along the arduous path we tread amidst the gathering shadows cast by malevolent forces, the resplendent light of the Lord continues to shine with unwavering brilliance. Engaging in this cosmic struggle is not merely a solemn obligation, but a sacred duty incumbent upon us, the faithful. Let us cling steadfastly to our faith, drawing inspiration from the luminous examples set by those who have gone before us. Like Daniel amidst the ravenous lions, like Joshua amid the crumbling walls of Jericho, like Paul transformed by divine grace on the road to Damascus. In these trying times, as the world descends into the abyss of turmoil, our need for unity has never been more pressing. Let us raise our voices in fervent prayer, not only for our own salvation, but for the redemption of every soul, yearning for the solace of divine light. Let us prepare our hearts and fortify our spirits for the trials that loom ahead. Armed with courage and fortified by unwavering faith in the sacred verses of Scripture, we find solace and reassurance. For it is written, Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. Romans 8.39 let us therefore take solace in the divine promise of the Lord's unfailing guidance and protection, even in the darkest of hours. Let us stand united, resolute against the encroaching darkness, against the malevolent schemes of demons and the nefarious machinations of evil. Let us strive to be beacons of hope, vessels of compassion, and conduits of divine love in a world shrouded in the pall of darkness. Let us endeavor to spread the timeless truths of God's word and the boundless compassion of his love to all who cross our path. With unity of purpose and unwavering faith in the Lord's providence, we can surmount every obstacle, weather every storm, and emerge victorious in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Let us therefore march forward, dear brethren, hand in hand, 
heart in heart, in unyielding solidarity and unshakable faith. For together, in the embrace of divine grace, we shall overcome, we shall endure, and we shall triumph. Amen. In the heart of Jerusalem, beneath a sky so serene it whispered of ancient secrets, the air trembled. A sound, both haunting and majestic, ruptured the calm of sound that many swore was not of this earth. It was as if the heavens themselves had opened, releasing a symphony both terrifying and awe-inspiring. And amidst this celestial cacophony, there appeared a vision so profound, so unmistakable, it could only be one entity. The Archangel Michael, the Protector, the Warrior of the Divine. Imagine, if you will, standing upon the ancient stones of Jerusalem, the city bathed in the golden hue of the setting sun, only for the air to be suddenly filled with the sound of trumpets, not just any trumpets, but those heralding something beyond our understanding, something that speaks directly to the soul of every believer, and even to those who yet to believe. This isn't a tale from centuries past. This is here, this is now. The Bible speaks of times when the veil between heaven and earth thins, when signs and wonders manifest to signal the unfolding of events foretold in the book of Revelation. Trumpets sound to herald the approach of the end times, each blast a prelude to judgments and divine interventions. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Revelation 8, 2. These are not mere instruments of sound, but vessels of profound prophecy, awakening humanity to the presence of the divine. What unfolded in Jerusalem wasn't a solitary event. Across the globe, from quiet suburbs to bustling cities, similar sounds have pierced the skies. Sounds that defy easy explanation, that scientists and scholars scramble to understand. But in Jerusalem, the appearance of the Archangel Michael adds a layer of significance that cannot be overlooked. This isn't just about unexplained phenomena. This is about a message, a sign of divine watchfulness, and perhaps a warning. This series of events beckons us to explore deeper, to question not just the nature of these sounds and sightings, but their timing, their location, and most importantly, their meaning. Jerusalem, a city of unparalleled spiritual significance, stands once again at the crossroads of history and prophecy. The Archangel Michael's appearance is no random occurrence, but a powerful reminder of God's presence and protection echoing through time, from ancient battles to modern struggles. In the Christian tradition, Michael is the protector, the one who stands in defiance of evil, a beacon of strength and faith. His appearance in Jerusalem, coupled with the mysterious sounds, sends a ripple through the fabric of our reality, urging us to look up, to listen, and to prepare. It's a call that resonates with the very core of Christian eschatology, signaling that the end times may not be a distant future, but a present reality. But what does this mean for us, for humanity? The global impact of these phenomena cannot be understated. In a world often divided by belief and disbelief, such events challenge us to confront our understanding of the divine, to reconsider our place in a universe far more mysterious and interconnected than we might have imagined. These are not mere curiosities to be filed away and forgotten. They are markers, guideposts pointing toward a truth that demands our attention and reflection. The significance of these events transcends religious boundaries, sparking conversations and debates across the spectrum of belief. For believers, it's a tangible manifestation of biblical prophecy, a call to faithfulness and vigilance. For skeptics, it's a phenomenon that defies conventional explanation, inviting exploration and inquiry. For all of us, it's a reminder of the awe-inspiring mystery that surrounds our existence. A mystery that, at times like these, draws us closer, compelling us to wonder, to seek, and perhaps to believe. As we stand witness to these signs, let us remember that the Bible speaks not only of warnings, but of hope, of a future where faith overcomes fear, where love triumphs over despair. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, Amen. Revelation 1-7 In the midst of uncertainty, this promise stands unshaken, a beacon of light guiding us through the storms of our times. Let us then approach these signs with open hearts and minds, ready to engage with the mysteries they present. 
eager to understand their place in the divine tapestry. For in doing so, we affirm our role in a story far greater than ourselves, a story of redemption, of hope, and of the unfailing love that guides the universe toward its ultimate fulfillment. In Jerusalem, amid the stones steeped in millennia of prayer, an occurrence shattered the ordinary. The atmosphere itself seemed to tremble with the sound of trumpets, not crafted by human hands, but by something far more profound. So this wasn't the familiar call to worship or the clamor of celebration. This was different, ethereal, arresting. It gripped the heart of the city in a moment of collective astonishment. Witnesses, residents, and visitors alike spoke of a presence, a figure of light and strength. Archangel Michael, it was said, watching over Jerusalem from the heavens. Eyewitnesses shared their stories, each voice adding to a chorus of awe and wonder. It came without warning, a local merchant reflected. This sound, it was like nothing of this earth. It made the hairs on your neck stand on end, and in that moment, you felt something more. He wasn't alone. Similar reports emerged, creating a web of experience that spanned the globe, connecting diverse cultures and peoples through a shared, inexplicable event. The scientific community, usually ready with explanations, found itself grappling with the inexplicable. Atmospheric scientists, acoustic experts, and seismologists delved into their respective fields seeking answers. Yet the phenomenon defied the neat categorizations of known natural events. Parallel to the quest for scientific understanding, sightings of the Archangel Michael in Jerusalem invited contemplation and debate among theologians and scholars of the mystic. These visions, described with a clarity and consistency across accounts, added a profound spiritual dimension to the phenomenon. The event, marked by the calendar as occurring in early December 2016, was not an isolated incident. History is dotted with accounts of mysterious sounds from the ancient sky. Trumpets recounted in folklore to modern-day recordings, captured on devices and shared across the digital expanse. Yet the intersection of these sounds with the appearance of an archetypal protector figure in Jerusalem has ignited a fervor of analysis and interpretation. The digital age, with its unparalleled capacity for information sharing, has turned the phenomenon into a global dialogue. Recordings of the sounds, alongside descriptions and depictions of the Archangel Michael, circulated rapidly, drawing millions into a conversation filled with speculation, wonder, and a quest for meaning. Amidst this, a passage from the Book of Revelation found resonance, highlighting the biblical association of trumpet sounds with divine messages and cosmic events. The unfolding story of these mysterious sounds and celestial sightings in Jerusalem and beyond challenges us to listen, watch, and reflect. It invites us into a broader conversation about the intersection of faith, history, and the mysteries that transcend our daily experience. As we navigate through the layers of this remarkable event, our journey is far from over. The sounds may have faded, and the visions may have vanished into the ether. But the questions they've raised and the emotions they've stirred continue to resonate, urging us to explore further and seek understanding. In the shared human endeavor to grasp the truly inexplicable Jerusalem's ancient stones, witnesses to millennia of human faith and divine mysteries recently echoed with sounds and sights that defy explanation. But this phenomenon, as singular as it seems, forms part of a global tapestry of similar events, each thread weaving into the complex narrative of our times. From the terraces of British Columbia to the vast expanse of the American Midwest, the air has been filled with sounds that many describe as coming from nowhere and everywhere at once. In the early hours of a morning in Terrace, British Columbia, residents were awakened not by the familiar calls of nature, but by a sound more akin to a cinematic portrayal of the apocalypse. For about 10 minutes, the air was filled with what could only be described as the blaring of trumpets, a sound so powerful it seemed to carry with it the weight of unseen worlds. This event was neither the beginning nor the end of such phenomena. Similar reports have emerged from across the globe, spanning continents and cultures. In the United States, a place far removed from the ancient religious epicenter of Jerusalem, the sounds have permeated the skies from California to Virginia, each occurrence leaving behind a trail of questions and a sense of awe. These sounds, described by some as the trumpets of angels, 
have been recorded and shared by thousands, turning skeptics into believers and leaving scientists searching for plausible explanations. The sound of a trumpet throughout the annals of human history has signaled the commencement of battles, the arrival of monarchs, and the proclamation of pivotal decrees. Yet within the woven tapestry of biblical prophecy, the trumpet transcends its earthly origins, becoming a herald of divine mysteries and the unfolding of the end times. The Book of Revelation, a text that has fascinated and perplexed scholars and believers alike for centuries, casts the trumpet as a central symbol in the narrative of the apocalypse, imbuing it with a significance that resonates deeply within the Christian consciousness. In Revelation, the trumpet is not merely an instrument of sound, it is the harbinger of the celestial and the cataclysmic, a prelude to events of cosmic significance. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Revelation 8, 2. This moment marks the beginning of a series of divine interventions, each trumpet blast ushering in a new act of God's will upon the earth, from the unleashing of natural disasters to the downfall of empires. The first four trumpets, with their calamitous effects on the natural world, challenge humanity's dominion over the earth. They are a stark reminder of the fragility of our existence and the power of the Creator over creation. With each sound, the very fabric of human achievement is questioned as lands are ravaged, waters turned bitter, and the heavens themselves darkened. Yet it is perhaps the final three trumpets, often referred to as the woes, that capture the most attention. These are not mere physical disasters but spiritual awakenings, each woe unraveling the reality of human morality and divine judgment. The fifth trumpet opens the abyss, releasing locust-like creatures that torment those who do not bear the seal of God. This torment is not of the body, but of the soul, a divine message to a humanity that has strayed from the path of righteousness. The sixth trumpet unleashes a boundless horde, killing a third of humanity. It is a somber reflection on the consequences of war and conflict, a dire warning of what might come if humanity continues on a path of destruction and discord. And yet, even in the face of such devastation, the heart of the message lies not in despair, but in the possibility of redemption, an invitation to repentance before the sounding of the final trumpet. As the narrative progresses toward the seventh and last trumpet, the anticipation within the Christian tradition grows. This final blast signifies nothing less than the culmination of history, the moment when the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Revelation 11:15. It is a trumpet of victory, of the ultimate triumph of good over evil, of God's sovereignty over all. The significance of the trumpet sounds in Revelation extends beyond their immediate impact on the earth and its inhabitants. They are symbolic of the deeper spiritual journey each believer is called to undertake, a journey of faith, repentance, and transformation. In the echoing blast of each trumpet, believers are reminded of the transient nature of this world and the eternal reality that lies beyond. For the Christian believer, the sounds of the apocalypse as described in Revelation are not just ancient texts or theological constructs, they are a living part of the faith a reminder of the covenant between God and humanity and the promise of a new creation. They inspire a sense of urgency, a call to live in accordance with God's will and to remain vigilant and faithful in anticipation of Christ's return. In our exploration of the biblical significance of the trumpet sounds and their role in the book of Revelation, we are invited to engage with these themes not as distant observers, but as active participants in a story that continues to unfold. It is a narrative that challenges us to reflect on our own lives, our actions, and our relationship with the divine. Through the symbolism of the trumpet, we are drawn into a deeper understanding of the apocalypse, not just as an end, but as a beginning, an invitation to witness the renewal of all things under the reign of Christ. As we delve into the mysterious sounds that have echoed across the globe, from the ancient stones of Jerusalem to the far reaches of every continent, a chilling connection emerges, linking these celestial harmonies to the foreboding blasts of the six trumpets described in the Book of Revelation. Among these, it is the sounding of the sixth trumpet that arrests our attention, heralding not just turmoil, but the appearance of an angel, 
a moment of profound significance that reverberates through the corridors of faith and prophecy. The sixth trumpet, as described in Revelation 9.13 to 21, marks a pivotal point in the unfolding narrative of the end times. It is a sound that unleashes an army bound at the great river Euphrates, destined to kill a third of mankind. This depiction is not merely symbolic, but serves as a stark reminder of the potential for chaos and destruction that lies in the wake of humanity's choices. The appearance of an angel at this juncture is especially compelling, signaling divine intervention and the intricate dance between celestial beings and the fate of the world. To the ears of the faithful and the curious alike, the mysterious sounds reported around the world bear an uncanny resemblance to this prophetic scenario. Navigating through the rich tapestry of biblical prophecy and the mysterious symphonies of the sky, we find ourselves anchored by the echoes of history. These auditory phenomena, resonating through the annals of time, are not mere curiosities but have been interpreted as divine communiques, guiding, warning, and sometimes chastising humanity. Let's traverse back to ancient times where history and prophecy intertwine. Consider the walls of Jericho, which crumbled to the ground at the sound of trumpets as recounted in the book of Joshua. This event, beyond its historical context, has been a metaphor for divine intervention and the power of faith. Fast forward to the first century, and we encounter the siege of Jerusalem, a calamity foretold by ominous signs and celestial portents, later interpreted by historians like Josephus as warnings from the divine. In the Middle Ages, the mysterious sound of the sky trumpets was often heralded as an omen. Chronicles from this era recount how entire villages were stirred into frenzies of repentance and prayer upon hearing these celestial announcements, interpreting them as warnings of impending judgment or calls to penitence. The Great Lisbon Earthquake of 1755, which led to a tsunami and fires causing widespread destruction, was accompanied by strange sounds heard across Europe. Philosophers and theologians of the time debated their significance with many seeing them as a divine admonition against the hubris of Enlightenment rationalism. Moving into more recent history, during the tumultuous times of both world wars, there were numerous reports of heavenly sounds interpreted by the faithful as divine commentary on human conflict. Pilots and soldiers recounted hearing ethereal voices and music, interpreting them as signs of divine presence amidst the horrors of war. In the 20th century, the phenomenon known as the hum, first reported in the UK in the 1970s, brought a modern twist to these ancient experiences. Described as a persistent low-frequency noise, it led to widespread speculation about its source and meaning. For some, it was a stark reminder of the biblical warning to be still and know that I am God, Psalm 46.10, a call to contemplation in a world increasingly filled with noise. These historical events, when viewed through the lens of biblical prophecy and divine warning, offer a fascinating perspective on the mysterious sounds of 2024. Each instance serves as a thread in the broader tapestry of human divine interaction, a narrative that spans millennia. The sounds, whether trumpets heralding the apocalypse or the groans of a creation subjected to futility, are imbued with a sense of urgency and transcendence, pushing us to ponder our place in the cosmos and our relationship with the divine. The critical examination of these past phenomena reveals a pattern. At times of upheaval, transition, or significant human folly, the heavens seem to speak, urging reflection, repentance, and a return to spiritual values. These interpretations, grounded in faith and bolstered by historical precedent, offer a counterpoint to the strictly scientific explanations, reminding us of the multifaceted nature of our quest for understanding. As we stand in the present, confronted with the enigmatic sounds of 2024, we are compelled to consider their place in this continuum. Are they mere quirks of nature, or do they carry a deeper, perhaps divine message? The debate is as old as humanity itself, a testament to our enduring quest for meaning in the mysterious. In exploring these sounds and their historical counterparts, we are engaged in a dialogue that transcends time, a conversation between the divine and the human. It's a dialogue that challenges us to listen not only with our ears, but with our hearts, to discern the messages woven into the fabric of our reality. As we peel back the layers of mystery shrouding the sounds from the sky, 
a more shadowy narrative emerges from the depths of clandestine speculation and whispered rumors. At the heart of many of these whispered theories lie government projects, some known, and others the stuff of legend, which purportedly possess the power to manipulate the very atmosphere and perhaps the minds of people worldwide. Some believe the mysterious sounds come from government research projects. One such project is the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, HARP, in Alaska. HARP is controversial because its true purpose is unclear. Conspiracy theorists believe it does more than study the ionosphere, like controlling the weather or even mines. These theories aren't entirely unfounded. A US official once spoke about technology to manipulate weather with electromagnetic waves, fueling suspicion about HARP. Interestingly, Russia has a similar facility called Sura with reports of strange sounds after it's activated. This adds to the speculation that government research might be behind the mysterious sounds. The existence of HARP and Sura raises a bigger question. Are there other secret government projects hidden under the veil of national security? These projects could potentially manipulate the atmosphere and cause the strange sounds heard worldwide. Conspiracy theories abound online and in documentaries, with some suggesting involvement from Area 51, a place long linked to UFOs and aliens. Others propose a vast global network of ionosphere research facilities, conducting massive, never-before-seen experiments that could explain the global nature of the sounds. The rabbit hole goes deeper with whispers of Project Bluebeam, a supposed secret NASA project aimed at creating a new world order through technologically simulated religious events. According to this theory, the sounds could be part of psychological operations designed to manipulate the masses, a prelude to the projection of religious figures in the sky to herald a new era. Skeptics and believers clash over the plausibility of these theories. While skeptics demand concrete evidence, pointing to the lack of official acknowledgement or scientific validation, Believers cite the veil of secrecy and the history of covert operations as reason enough to suspect that not all is as it seems. The debate rages on, fueled by each new occurrence of the sounds, each new video, each new eyewitness account that seems to defy easy explanation. In this vortex of speculation and skepticism, one thing remains clear. The sounds from the sky have opened a Pandora's box of theories each more intriguing and unsettling than the last. As we delve into the world of government projects and conspiracies, we find ourselves questioning the boundaries of human capability and the depths of our understanding of the natural world. The quest for answers leads us down shadowed paths where the line between science and fiction blurs and where the truth, elusive as ever, beckons us forward. In this journey, the sounds from the sky serve not only as a mystery to be solved, but as a mirror reflecting our deepest fears, our wildest speculations, and our unquenchable thirst for knowledge in the face of the unknown. Embarking on a journey through the enigmatic landscape of sound phenomena, we pivot our gaze toward the stars, where the silence of the cosmos whispers secrets yet untold. The possibility that these terrestrial symphonies could be celestial telegrams from extraterrestrial intelligences is not merely the fodder of science fiction, but a question that probes the very essence of humanity's quest for companionship in the cosmos. The 1977 WOW signal, an unexpected 72-second radio frequency burst from deep space, remains one of the most tantalizing hints of extraterrestrial communication originating from the Sagittarius constellation. This signal, recorded at Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Observatory, has evaded explanation standing as a solitary beacon of the potential for interstellar dialogue. Despite decades of silence since, the memory of the WOW signal ignites the imagination, suggesting that the cosmos might be more crowded and communicative than we ever dared to dream. Fast forward to the present day, 2024, where the air is thick with sounds of unknown origins, sounds that have transcended boundaries and ignited a global conversation. In the absence of concrete explanations, the theory that these might be attempts at communication from beyond our world gains traction. Could it be that we are on the receiving end of a cosmic Morse code, a signal designed to be heard across the vast expanse of space and time? Consider the repeated patterns observed in some of these sounds, reminiscent of the structured repetition that SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, 
scientists deem crucial in distinguishing a true signal from the cacophony of cosmic noise. These patterns beckon the scientific community to listen closer, to decode the message that may lie within. The implications of such communication are profound, suggesting not only that we are not alone in the universe but that our celestial neighbors are striving to bridge the interstellar gap. This theory of alien communication stirs the pot of our collective imagination, challenging us to reconsider our place in the universal tapestry. Historical instances of unexplained aerial phenomena, such as the 1997 Phoenix Lights, where thousands witnessed unaccountable lights and sounds in the sky, are retrospectively scrutinized through this extraterrestrial lens. In such moments, the line between myth and reality blurs, offering a glimpse into a universe that is more interconnected than we ever imagined. Yet, embracing this possibility is not without its skeptics. The scientific method demands evidence, and the field of astrobiology underscores the monumental challenge of making contact. The vast distances of space, coupled with the complexities of interstellar communication, present formidable obstacles. However, the ongoing advancements in technology and our understanding of the cosmos suggest that if such communication were ever to be established, the time could be now. Across forums, academic circles, and coffee shop conversations, the debate rages on. Enthusiasts point to the Drake Equation, which estimates the number of communicative civilizations in the cosmos, arguing that the odds favor such encounters. Critics caution against anthropocentrism, the tendency to interpret these phenomena through the lens of human experience and expectation. Amidst this debate, the sounds from the sky serve as a clarion call urging us to broaden our perspective to entertain the possibility of a universe teeming with life and intelligence. As we sift through the evidence, as we listen to the whispers of the cosmos, we are reminded of our eternal quest to understand our place among the stars. The pursuit of these sounds, whether they be the handiwork of terrestrial phenomena, the machinations of covert projects, or the signals of extraterrestrial intelligences, is more than a quest for answers. It is a reflection of our unyielding desire to connect, to discover that in the vast, silent expanse of the universe, we might find a voice that echoes our own. As the veil of night descends across our globe, from the sprawling metropolises to the secluded hamlets, the air vibrates with the enigmatic chorus of the unknown. These sounds, resonating from the heavens, have not only pierced the silence, but have also touched the very soul of humanity. Across cultures and continents, the reactions to these auditory phenomena have been as varied as they are profound, weaving a complex tapestry of human emotion and thought. In the heart of Africa, beneath the vast expanse of the Sahara sky, tribal communities have interpreted these sounds as messages from the ancestors, a call to return to the old ways, to restore harmony between man and nature. Nightly gatherings illuminated only by the flickering light of fire become arenas of storytelling and speculation where every sound from above is a verse in the ongoing dialogue between the earthly and the divine. Meanwhile, in the bustling streets of India, a land steeped in spiritual tradition, these celestial sounds have stirred a wave of philosophical introspection. For some, they are the cosmic OM, the vibrational foundation of existence, breaking through the cacophony of daily life to remind humanity of the underlying unity of all creation. Temples, mosques, and churches alike have become sanctuaries for those seeking solace and understanding as the sounds resonate with the spiritual teachings of countless generations. Across the Pacific, in the technological crucible of Japan, the reaction has taken on a different hue. Here, amidst the neon glow and the relentless rhythm of progress, the sounds have sparked a fervor of scientific inquiry and technological innovation. Conferences and symposiums convene with the aim of deciphering these cosmic whispers, while social media buzzes with theories ranging from the plausible to the fantastical. Yet beneath this veneer of rationalism, there lies a deep-seated reverence for the mysteries of the universe, a reminder of the delicate balance between human achievement and the forces of nature. In the Americas, the sounds have echoed through the corridors of power, and down the alleyways of the marginalized, igniting a spectrum of reactions. For some, they are a clarion call to environmental action, a dramatic underscore of the planet's distress signal in the face of climate change and ecological degradation. Vigils and protests, harnessing the power of these sounds, have sprung up, demanding urgent action to heal the wounded Earth. Yet, for others, 
These sounds have given rise to fear and uncertainty, a foreboding sense of impending doom. In the United States, emergency services have been inundated with calls from concerned citizens, while survivalist groups see in these sounds the harbinger of societal collapse, stockpiling resources and fortifying retreats in anticipation of the unknown. But it is perhaps in the quiet solitude of the individual human heart that these sounds have found their most profound resonance. For many, they have sparked a journey of personal reflection and spiritual awakening. A re-evaluation of life's priorities is in the shadow of the inexplicable. Social media platforms are awash with personal testimonies of transformation, of lives redirected towards greater purpose and connection in the wake of these celestial phenomena. The global reaction to these sounds, transcending borders and beliefs, underscores the shared humanity that binds us all. In the face of the unknown, we find common ground in our wonder, our fear, and our quest for understanding. These sounds, whatever their origin, have become a mirror reflecting our collective psyche, exposing our vulnerabilities and our strengths, our divisions and our unity. As we stand at this crossroads of history and mystery, the sounds from the sky challenge us to look beyond the immediate, to question not just the nature of these phenomena, but the nature of our response to them. They invite us to consider not just the impact on our planet, but on our spirits, urging us to contemplate our place in the cosmos and our responsibility to each other and to the Earth. In this global symphony of reaction and reflection, we are reminded that in the face of the vast, unfathomable universe, we are but a single species on a small planet, bound together by our shared experience of wonder and awe. As we continue to listen to the sounds from the sky, let us also listen to each other, finding in our diverse reactions a common thread of hope, curiosity, and a relentless drive to understand the great mysteries of our time. In the age where information traverses the globe at the speed of light, the mysterious sounds from the sky have not merely whispered to those directly beneath them. They have roared into the lives of billions thanks to the omnipresent eye of the media. The role of the media in shaping the narrative of these enigmatic occurrences cannot be overstated, acting as both amplifier and interpreter of events that have stirred the collective consciousness of humanity. The initial reports of these sounds, characterized by their diversity and ubiquity, found fertile ground in the 24-hour news cycle, where sensational headlines grasped for the fleeting attention of a global audience. Networks and news outlets, from the behemoths of broadcast journalism to the digital domains of news aggregation, have vied to cover these phenomena, each bringing its own angle, its own interpretation, to the fore. The result a crescendo of coverage that oscillates between the extremes of fear-mongering and scientific scrutiny, between spiritual speculation and outright dismissal. In this digital era, social media platforms have become the new town square, where eyewitness accounts, raw footage, and personal narratives proliferate, untethered by the editorial constraints of traditional media. Here, a video capturing the haunting melody of the sounds can go viral within hours, shared across continents, igniting debates and discussions that span the gamut of human emotion and intellect. The hashtags, Sky Sounds, Mystery Sounds 2024, and Heavens Have Opened have become banners under which millions gather, sharing theories, fears, and hopes. Yet, this democratization of information comes with its own perils. The rapid spread of unverified content can contribute to mass hysteria, as apocalyptic interpretations and conspiracy theories find as much footing as rational explanations and scientific analysis. The line between fact and fiction blurs, leaving the public adrift in a sea of speculation where the truth becomes just another drop in the digital deluge. Simultaneously, the media's coverage of these sounds has provided a platform for a wealth of scientific and theological debate elevating the discourse from mere curiosity to a multifaceted examination of our world and beyond. Esteemed scientists, theologians, and scholars have taken to the airwaves and the internet, offering their insights and interpretations, engaging in dialogues that span disciplines and ideologies. Television specials, documentaries, and dedicated web series have emerged, seeking to dissect the phenomena from every conceivable angle, offering the public a mosaic of perspectives. The media's role in amplifying these events has also had the unintended consequence of uniting disparate fields in a common quest for understanding. 
collaborations between atmospheric scientists, geologists, astronomers, and theologians have been sparked by the global conversation, highlighting the sounds as a nexus where different strands of human knowledge and belief intertwine. In this context, the media has transcended its traditional role as mere reporter of events, becoming an active participant in the unfolding story of the mysterious sounds. It has acted as both catalyst and conduit for a global dialogue that spans the scientific and the spiritual, the factual and the speculative. Through its lens, the sounds have been magnified not just in volume but in significance, prompting us to confront the unknown, to question our assumptions about the world and our place within it. As we navigate the complexities of this media landscape, we are reminded of the power of information and the responsibility that comes with it. The sounds from the sky, in all their mystery and majesty, have become a litmus test for our collective ability to discern, to debate, and to dream. In the echo chamber of the modern media, we find not just noise, but a reflection of our deepest fears and highest hopes. A reminder that in the face of the unknown, we seek not just answers, but understanding. In the final analysis, the media's coverage of these mysterious sounds stands as a testament to the enduring human quest for knowledge, a quest that spans the celestial and the terrestrial, the divine and the mundane. As we continue to listen to the sounds from the sky and to each other, let us do so with a discerning ear, aware of the power of the media to shape our perceptions and realities. Let us seek the truth with a spirit of inquiry and openness, ready to traverse the vast expanse of the unknown, guided by the light of reason and the warmth of human connection. In the wake of the mysterious sounds that have enveloped our world, a chorus of voices rises, each seeking to interpret this phenomenon through the lens of their expertise and belief systems. At the heart of this reflective discussion stand theologians, scientists, and even conspiracy theorists, each offering insights that not only illuminate the diversity of human thought, but also underscore the profound quest for meaning that defines our existence. Theologians drawing from the deep wells of spiritual wisdom see in these sounds a divine orchestration, a celestial dialogue that beckons humanity to listen with the heart as much as with the ears. For Christians, this phenomenon resonates with the biblical narratives of trumpet sounds heralding significant divine interventions, moments when the veil between the temporal and the eternal thins, revealing the majesty and mystery of God's plan. These scholars and spiritual leaders call upon the faithful to see beyond the fear and uncertainty these sounds might evoke, to discern within them a call to deepening faith, to a renewed commitment to live in accordance with divine precepts. In this moment of global curiosity and concern, theologians remind us of the value of Christian faith as a beacon of hope and a source of strength. They point to the biblical promises of guidance and protection, encouraging believers to stand firm in their faith, now stand silent, awaiting the moment of divine wrath and the revelation of all that is profane. Amidst this, the disciples of Jesus, gathered on the Mount of Olives, seek to understand the signs and the timing of his anticipated return and the culmination of the world. Jesus warns them to be wary of being misled, predicting the rise of impostors and a series of cataclysmic events, a surge of conflicts, widespread rumors of war, and devastating natural disasters are foretold, signifying the advent of trials. As nations engage in battle, as scarcity and illness spread, and as the earth quakes, these events are but the harbingers of a more profound chaos, the commencement of deep anguish. Matthew 24 is a profound prophetic chapter where Jesus outlines the signs that will precede the end of the age and his second coming. He speaks of widespread deception, wars, famines, earthquakes, and persecution as the beginning of birth pains for the world. These events will escalate in intensity and frequency, leading up to a time of great tribulation unmatched in history. The concept of Armageddon is deeply rooted in biblical eschatology, representing the final battle between the forces of good and evil. The Battle of Armageddon is not only a physical confrontation, but also represents the spiritual warfare that has been ongoing throughout human history. It is the culmination of the cosmic conflict between the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Darkness. The Bible teaches that in this battle, Jesus Christ will emerge victorious, establishing His Kingdom of Peace and Righteousness. As we observe the world today, 
the interest in Armageddon and end-time prophecies is indeed significant. Many people wonder if the current global events are aligning with these ancient predictions. While interpretations vary, the central message remains that history is moving towards a decisive moment when God will intervene to judge the world and restore all things. The Book of Revelation presents a vivid depiction of the cosmic struggle between good and evil, with Archangel Michael and his angels playing a pivotal role in this celestial conflict. Revelation 12 7 9 describes a war in heaven, where Michael and his angels battle against the dragon, identified as Satan, and his forces. Despite the dragon's might, he and his angels are defeated and cast out of heaven, no longer having a place there. In the eschatological narrative, Satan's deployment of false miracles and signs will ensnare many. A coalition of ten European rulers will rapidly coalesce, conferring their power upon the enigmatic figure known as the Beast, evoking wonder at what seems to be a resurgence of the Holy Roman Empire. The veneration and worship directed towards the Beast signal the beginning of the Great Tribulation, a period of unparalleled darkness for humanity. It is at this juncture that the divine plan of salvation is set into motion a mission to rescue humanity from the clutches of evil. The brinkmanship with annihilation serves to expose the hollowness of the Babylonian system of wickedness. The sounding of seven trumpets marks a series of cataclysmic events. Each trumpet blasts a testament to humanity's dependence on the divine. The first three trumpets bring about the destruction of essential elements of life, while the fourth casts shadows over the earth, plunging it into partial obscurity. The fifth trumpet's call releases the legions of the beast, as a chasm opens, and a swarm akin to locusts emerges, commanded by the fallen angel Abidan, also known as Apollyon, the destroyer, as chronicled in the final book of the New Testament. With the blast of the sixth trumpet, a formidable force from the east is set free, followed by the release of four angels previously bound at the Euphrates River. This act heralds the assembly of a vast army, numbering 200 million, poised to eradicate a third of humanity. These events set the stage for the ultimate confrontation at Armageddon. Yet, even amidst such destruction, humanity's defiance persists, with continued idolatry and demon worship. The seventh trumpet resounds with a proclamation that the reigns of earthly kingdoms have now passed to the Lord and His anointed. Contrary to expectations of joy, the earth's deceived denizens lament. The divine fury is further manifested in the unleashing of the last seven plagues, bringing afflictions such as grievous sores upon the followers of the beast, waters turning to blood, searing heat, and an all-encompassing darkness. In the face of these tribulations, humanity's stubbornness endures, with no repentance, only blasphemy against God. This grim tableau underscores the imperative for steadfastness and faith in the divine amidst the trials of the end times. The moment has come for us to rouse ourselves and prepare spiritually for the trials that lie ahead. As committed Christians, it is imperative that we bolster our spiritual defenses to face any forthcoming challenges. This means wholeheartedly accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior and fostering a robust bond with Him. Through regular prayer, meditation, and Bible study, we enhance our communion with God, seeking His direction, fortitude, and insight to overcome life's obstacles. Dedicated prayer and meditation help us forge a deep connection with the divine, imploring his strength and wisdom to tackle life's difficulties. The scriptures act as our navigational guide, filled with deep wisdom and revelations about God's master plan. Immersing ourselves in the word strengthens our belief and comprehension. Moreover, serving others is a crucial aspect of our spiritual journey. As followers of Christ, we are charged with spreading his message and supporting those in need. We are presented with the chance to partake in community aid, back philanthropic endeavors, and brighten others' lives with our actions and words. Through acts of service and kindness, we manifest God's love and bring solace to those enduring hardships. The receding Euphrates River is a stark reminder of the urgency for spiritual vigilance as we approach the end times. Now is the time to reaffirm our commitment to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior to cultivate our faith, and to tread resolutely on his path. Let us answer this summons to spiritual alertness and serve as lights of hope in the darkness. I hope this dialogue on spiritual readiness and the Euphrates River's significance has been illuminating. 
It highlights the necessity of recognizing the signs of our times and deepening our reliance on God, enabling us to stay firm in our spiritual path and resilient amid adversities. Regarding Jesus' return, it is ever approaching. Let us embrace this invitation to spiritual vigilance and become pillars of hope in these shadowed times. I hope this conversation on spiritual fortitude and the Euphrates River's significance has been illuminating. It highlights the need to recognize the signs of our era and to deepen our reliance on God, fortifying us to stay unwavering in our spiritual path and resilient amid life's adversities. The prospect of Jesus' return is ever-present, yet the precise moment of His coming remains unknown. As Mark 13.32 reminds us, but about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. This mystery was brought before Jesus by His disciples shortly before His ascension. He indicated that such knowledge rests solely with the Father. Thus, Jesus' return could be imminent or far off, underscoring the importance of constant preparedness. Scripture indicates that Jesus' second coming is to bestow blessings upon earth's people and lead many to heaven. As stated in Matthew 25, 34, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Jesus' deepest wish is to share forever with us in a place devoid of tears, pain, or grief. What could be more compelling than accepting this call and living in anticipation of an eternal fellowship with Him? Addressing Joe Rogan's remarks, he has indeed voiced several contentious opinions regarding the pandemic, vaccines, and lockdowns, which have been met with scientific scrutiny. He has posited that the pandemic may be a consequence of human disruption of natural systems, highlighting the importance of ecological balance. Genesis 3, 17 to 19 speaks to the consequences of human disobedience, stating, Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. This reflects the biblical view that suffering and disease are part of the fallen world's reality, yet God remains sovereign over all creation. Regarding the climate crisis, Joe Rogan has cast doubt on the scientific consensus about climate change, suggesting a link to Earth's magnetic field and downplaying human impact, citing historical climate cycles. The Bible, while not addressing climate change directly, emphasizes God's creation of the Earth and entrusts humans with its stewardship, as stated in Colossians 1, 16-17. It affirms God's ownership and maintenance of the earth and speaks of creation's anticipation for redemption and the promise of a renewed heaven and earth without suffering. Acknowledging the gravity of environmental issues is crucial, as is heeding expert advice. We must actively contribute to environmental conservation, practice humility, and rely on divine grace. Above all, Prioritizing God's kingdom and righteousness is essential as we await the renewal of all things. In discussing the Israel-Palestine conflict, Joe Rogan has voiced his concerns over the strife and advocated for a peaceful solution. He has shown respect for Jewish history and endorsed Israel's sovereignty. The Bible recounts God's selection of Abraham's lineage, the Israelites, as his chosen people, granting them Canaan perpetually. It details God's covenant with King David's line, promising an eternal dynasty. It further declares Jesus Christ, from Judah's tribe and David's lineage, as the Messiah and world's Redeemer. The scriptures affirm God's ongoing commitment to the Jewish people, with a promise of future restoration and blessing. As believers, we're called to reject hatred and violence, instead offering love and prayers for our adversaries. We must actively pursue justice and peace advocating for the downtrodden. Embracing inclusivity, we should honor the worth and rights of all, transcending race, creed, or nationality. Ultimately, our focus should be on spiritual outreach, sharing Christ's message with everyone, inviting them into the fold of God's family through faith. May we always be mindful that our true hope lies not in earthly abundance, but in the redemption offered by our Lord. 
echoing the words of Isaiah, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Isaiah 43 2 We are assured of God's constant presence, in both scarcity and plenty. In these times, let us unite as a fellowship of believers to aid those impacted by environmental shifts. By providing sustenance to the hungry, water to the parched, and solace to the fatigued, we act as Christ's emissaries, serving Him through our deeds. The scriptures remind us that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, Ecclesiastes 3.1. Perhaps in God's sovereignty, this is a time for us to listen more attentively, not only to the sounds from the sky, but to a still, small voice that speaks into the depths of our being, guiding, comforting, and calling us to a greater awareness of His presence and purpose in our lives.